What's up, I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick no-nonsense guide, I'll be showing you how to optimize Farming Simulator 2025 for the best possible performance. This video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, it jumps straight into in-game options. While there are still some issues with the game's engine that have long lasted through many games, one of the super annoying things is having to pay for the game a second time if you wish to host yourself a dedicated server. If you're dedicated enough to set up a dedicated server for you and your friends to play on, then check the description down below for a full video guide on that. If you don't wish to put even more stress on your PC while you're trying to, well, optimize it, then check out this video's sponsor, Apex Hosting. If you want to have a dedicated server setup that you don't need to buy an extra copy of the game for, that runs 24-7 with powerful DDoS protection, super low latency, and backups, then you should definitely consider using Apex Hosting. You'll find a link in the description down below. Visit apexhost.gg slash troubleshootfs for this particular farming simulator deal. Apex Hosting currently have a coupon for 50% off your first month of hosting a dedicated server. Simply click that link, order now, or view more, and customize your server to better fit your needs and number of players, then proceed, and here you'll see the coupon FS25 has automatically been used for 50% off your first month. Huge shout out to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide, so let's get into it. This guide is not going to cover Windows optimization at all, instead you'll find guides linked down below to get even more performance out of your system. For now though, let's look at Farming Simulator 25's in-game options. So, from the main menu, I'll head to Options in the bottom left, and everything on this first General Settings tab is your preference. Languages, headset trackings, etc. What we're going to be focusing on is this second tab here, Display Settings. In here, you'll have a default hardware profile based on what kind of system you have, and this changes all the settings under the hood that we'll get to in just a moment. Whenever this is set to, it's probably a good idea to work up and down from there, as it's taken its best educated guess as to what kind of performance you can get from your system. Then looking down at screen resolution. Things are super blurry for me, but that's because the resolution here doesn't actually match my display. I have a 2K display, so I'll be cranking it up to 2K. And if I wanted to, I could even go ultra wide on this monitor, but it won't look good on YouTube. As soon as we apply this using enter, the game will restart. And just like that, everything looks infinitely better. Make sure your screen resolution matches your display. Then vSync should be turned off and the frame rate limit here, I'd recommend capping to 60 for now, but I'll show you how to uncap it in game, which lets you go even higher than the 240 FPS limit here. For now, I'll just leave it at 60. It's good to have, especially if you've got a portable gaming rig, you take your laptop with you. If you're cranking out extra frames you don't really care about seeing, you're just going to waste extra battery power or generate more heat for nothing. Then windowed mode, I'd recommend either full screen or preferably exclusive full screen for the best, most consistent performance. But if you're someone who tabs out a lot, like me, then leave this set to windowed, which is actually boardless windowed, so you can tab out, play around with other windows, Spotify, browsers, YouTube, Discord, and your game's not going to mess with your resolution or take super long to open and close every time. Resolution scaling, leave this at 100%, brightness and in-game HUD scale are both your preference. Then from here, hardware profile, we'll click right. Now we'll hit spacebar to open up the advanced settings and in here we can fine tune things. So, this game is a farming game, it's not a Twitch shooter like Call of Duty. Most people prefer to have a better looking game than 200 FPS. That being said, if you're struggling for FPS, then absolutely by all means, lower everything possible. However, if you can, there's a couple things you should try and raise. First of all, all of the draw distances up here. The higher you have these, the max of which is 200, the better everything's going to look in game. You can see further, see more of your farm, etc. And overall, the game's just going to look a lot better. If you have a higher tier graphics card, like a 2080, 3080, 4080 or above, leave these all set to 200 and move on. Otherwise, you can stick with the default settings that even Ultra goes up to, which is 150, 180, 150, 200. Obviously, if you have a much lower powered system, you're probably working from, let's say, medium. I wouldn't recommend raising them too high. For me though, it started at Ultra and these settings are pretty good, but for a better experience, I'll be cranking them all the way up. Then moving down to render quality. Resolution scaling should always be 100%, otherwise things are going to look weirdly blurry. Most of these down here are your preference, but there's a few that can result in big performance hits. Those are shader quality and shading rate. I'd recommend high as the highest TM. Then screen space shading rate is always turned off for some reason, so just leave that off. And screen space reflections do take some performance away from your system. Either have these off or, well, the lowest is high. 
Then, because there's just so many objects in every scene, shadows are going to be a big performance hit. Obviously, without shadows, the game is going to look weirdly flat, so if you have the ability to keep shadows on in general, I'd recommend you do so wherever you can. But for extra performance, disable screen space shadows here. I'll leave them on. SSAO quality is screen space ambient occlusion. For the most part, you can leave this on low or medium, and there's not going to be too much of a performance impact. Atmosphere quality, you can leave on high if not medium. I'll leave mine on high. Then volumetric fog. Lots of people say this is a fog simulator kind of game. Yeah, it's a big part of it, and it's also a big performance hitter. I'd recommend leaving this as low as possible. Low is going to give you a big performance boost here. There's not really a reason to raise this too high. Then cloud shadows, mostly your preference. But for a lot of people, they say that when clouds travel overhead, things just get a little bit too dark. If you find that you're one of those people, turn this off. Then scrolling down to rain quality, I'll leave this on very high. And texture resolution has to do with the amount of VRAM in your graphics card. We only have low and high here. So if you're running a graphics card with, say, four to five gigs of VRAM, set this down to low and forget about it. If you have anything above five gigs of VRAM, say six, eight, etc., set this up to high and that's good. Anisotropic filtering has practically no performance impact. Either leave this on eight or crank it up to 16 for slightly better looking textures pretty much for free on most modern hardware. Then scrolling down, light quality. Lighting and shadows do have a big impact on performance. Once again, this is just so much in the scene, so lowering things here is going to help a lot of the time. Light quality on high or medium is probably good for performance, but a lot of these you don't want to crank as low as possible, otherwise the game looks weirdly flat and lifeless. Lens flares you can leave as off, but you can enable them if you wish. Medium is the lowest option you can go to. For me, I'll leave it on. Well, medium is probably fine. I do like myself a more scenic looking game. Shadow quality, definitely crank this down to the lowest option, which is medium. Off again is just too flat. Shadow distance, we'll set this to medium, if not low. Although with low, you may notice some weird pop in where shadows suddenly appear the closer you get to them. So medium is probably a good option here. Soft shadows, I'll leave off. And finally, shadow map filtering, I'll set this down to low. Scrolling down to the settings section here, foliage shadows is obviously going to make things look a lot more realistic, lifelike, etc. Turning this off will result in a big performance improvement, but it's going to kill a lot of the aesthetic of the game. For me, I'll leave this on. Realistic beacon lights, I'll disable here. It shouldn't have too much of a visual impact. Field of view is entirely your preference, so have this set to what you want and leave it there. While it technically affects your FPS, your experience is more important than anything. Max shadow lights, the lower this option is, the better performance you'll get. Set this to two or three and you should be fine. The same goes for max mirrors. The lower this is, the better for performance. Three is usually what you'd have in most setups, if there are more mirrors that you can see, you may need to turn this option up. Tire tracks have to do with how long the tire tracks stick around. I'm pretty sure I'd leave this as high as possible just to see where you've been, etc. Finally, mesh tessellation volume. I'll leave this at the default of 185. Scrolling down to post-processing anti-aliasing. Here we get upscaling and frame generation. So there's multiple options here. Multi-sampling is just MSAA. Leave this off. Post-processing anti-aliasing. We have the options of off TAA, which is terribly blurry, DLAA, which is NVIDIA Deep Learning Anti-Aliasing, so it's going to make your game look a lot crispier using NVIDIA's tech. While it won't technically gain your FPS, it'll actually cost you a couple of FPS, maybe 2 or 3%. It's definitely worthwhile as it's going to make the game look so much better. Then FSR3, if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, is a good option here as well. And of course, XESS, which is Intel's solution to this. I'll leave the set to DLAA. If you're really clawing for performance and you don't want to lower the rest of your settings too much, you can try using DLSS or Findability FX Super Resolution, which will render your game in a smaller window, crank it up to full screen and use AI to fill in the gaps. This may result in weird glitchy visual artifacts, and a lot of them happen with fast moving thin things, such as crops, and you can notice some weird glitches behind it. If you find it super annoying, you may need to just bite the bullet and use DLAA or FSR3 for anti-aliasing, and don't use upscalers like DLSS or FSR, even XESS. For me, I'll leave this with just DLAA. I don't need a huge boost in performance, so I don't need these upscalers here. Fidelity FX Super Resolution 3 should be better than one over here. 
but it's entirely your preference. All of these options have quality options to performance options. The more to the performance side you push it, the smaller your game window gets, the more AI has to work to make it full screen again. So you may notice more visual glitches, the more to the performance side you push it. Each step is going to incrementally raise your FPS just a little bit until you're possibly CPU limited. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about frame generation. So DLAA or DLSS, if you have an NVIDIA GeForce 40 series or above, then you can use NVIDIA frame generation. However, it's not currently enabled or working in the game. Currently, there's only the option to use FSR 3 frame generation, which means everyone, NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, etc., can all use frame generation, which is pretty good. If you want to use frame generation, which can increase your input latency while technically increasing your FPS and making things look smoother, I'd only recommend using it if you have a high refresh rate monitor and you're getting a solid 50 to 60 frames where you can happily artificially double it without noticing too much extra input latency. To use FSR 3, you'll either need your AA option to be set to FSR 3, or you'll have to be using FSR 3 for upscaling. So just a quick reminder, post-process anti-aliasing is to make your game sharper, technically costing you FPS, and these options down here are upscaling. With either of these options chosen, whether it's upscaling or FSR 3 for anti-aliasing, you can enable frame generation here and enjoy a big boost in FPS, even if it's artificial. Finally, sharpness is your preference, and DRS quality down here seems to be turned off no matter what. So with these changes, I'll apply them and we'll get in game. And that's it. We should now have a much higher FPS. Yes, I'm currently sitting at 99. I don't have frame generation enabled and things look really good other than the odd stutter. This game engine does suffer from a lot of stuttering and hitching, but that's just by design. There's a lot of optimization that still needs to be done, but for the most part, it looks pretty good and performs okay. There's a lot running in the background of my PC, so that's also a reason that there's a lot of stuttering. If I close background processes, 300 Chrome tabs, things are going to start performing even better. But for now, we got a good boost in performance. I currently have the FPS overlay from Steam Shook in the top left, but what happens if you want to use the in-game FPS overlay, or do you even want to uncap your FPS in a game? Well, you'd usually use the F2 and 3 keys on your keyboard, but those don't work, and neither does Tilda to open the developer console, which is the key right below Escape. In order to get these options to work, we need to change the game settings file. So for now, I'll save and quit. So save and quit and we'll exit the game completely. Hold start and press E to bring up a new file browser. Then from here, head to documents, followed by my games, then farming simulator 2025. And inside of here, you should find game.xml. Open this with any text editor, such as notepad. Then inside of this window that pops up, we have all of our graphics options here. Scroll down until you see development near the bottom. Change controls false to controls true as such. That's it. File save or control S. Close this and now we can restart our game. You'll be able to open the developer console with tilde, the button just below escape, again to type in here and again to close it. And you can now use F2 to show your FPS in the top right and F3 to uncap your FPS. You don't know if it's actually done or not, it's just a silent toggle that happens in the background, other than seeing your FPS cap of 60 or whatever it is has now been lifted completely. In my options, I already have my FPS cap set to, I think it's 120, I'm not getting that many frames, but if I was, and I was being limited, this should uncap it. If you want to make shorts uncapped, you can open your console by heading tilde twice, and inside of here, type in enable frame rate, as you can see there, limit space fonts. Once you hit enter, your frame rate limit has been turned off, and now you should be getting the best possible FPS output from the game. Anyways, that's really it for this quick guide. Once again, thank you to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.